After NPK, we have our calcium, magnesium, and sulfur as our next uh, macronutrient. These nutrients are super important to the functioning of our plant, increasing photosynthesis, increasing um, produce quality, um, and we'll get into that uh, now. Before we start, my name is Till Simmons. I run this channel, Agriculture Explained. The reason why I make these uh, videos for you is just to help you out with your uh, agriculture, whether that's on your farm, your studies, or even in your garden. The only thing I ask from you is if you can su subscribe to the channel so that you can see our future videos and I can help you more. And the other thing is that you can share with a person you know that also enjoys agriculture and would um, benefit a lot from this too. All right, let's get into it. So first up we have calcium. So calcium is a cation in our soils. In the plant, it makes up about 0.5% of the dry weight um, of the plant material. So relative to the other nutrients and especially carbon, it doesn't actually make up that much. But remember to the first video in this series, all of our essential plant nutrients are very important to the function of our plant. Like the plant cannot survive and uh, produce without it. So regardless of the dry weight uh, percentage, they're still very important. So we have calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. So uh, C, A, M, G, and S. They make up 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and 0.1% of um, our plant. In terms of the form that our plants get these uh, nutrients in, both calcium mag and magnesium come in their cation form. So they're divalent uh, cations, which means they have a um, plus two charge. And typically these, these hang out on um, negative uh, particles in our soil called colloids. They stick to that and get exchanged to our plant with a hydrogen. Um, so a hydrogen comes out of the plant, um, or two hydrogen come out of the plant to exchange uh, with our cations. So sulfur is a little bit different. Uh, it's an anion and it comes as a sulfate. Now the interesting thing about negatively charged nutrients in our, in our soil is that they don't get to cling on to colloids. They have to cling on to positively charged particles. And the only thing that we have in our soil is soil organic carbon, um, which has both negative and positive sites. In terms of their function, calcium is very important in the structure of our cell walls. And it also has a slight role as a messenger. But when we think of the main role, it's, it's mostly used in uh, the firmness of a cell wall. And so when you think about, you know, having really firm fruit and a lot of um, different fr uh, fruit have firmness as a quality aspect and you get paid more when you have really nice firm fruit. So when we consider that as a primary role of calcium, it's super, super important, um, even for our, the grading of our fruit, that we get this nutrient rot. And the reason why or how this works is that we have a molecule called HG. Now, I'm not gonna attempt the actual name. It's pretty long, so just HG. So think of this as the backbone of our cell wall. So you have it, you have your, our cells. That cell has a cell wall similar to a wall of a room. Now, the more calcium that that cell wall has, the more reinforced uh, we can think it to be. So imagine having a wall, and then imagine having reinforcing within that wall. So the more calcium we have, the firmer um, and stronger our cell wall is going to be. And the reason why this is, is we have this molecule called HG, and it's made up of our calcium as well as a, a compound which um, has a kind of a zigzag pattern with a negative charge on uh, the inside. And so when two of these come together, they lock into each other like that, as you can see here, with our calcium almost as a glue holding it all together. And so when we don't have calcium, they don't get to lock together. They're, they're not held together by any uh, forces. Um, and, and you can see here, the calcium is positively charged. Uh, this compound is negatively charged. And so they are held together by these electric um, forces. So remember, a negative and positive charge attract. So these are going to be held together by those forces. So when we have lots of calcium or enough calcium, the calcium moves into um, this structure and it zips together, um, allowing for a really firm uh, cell wall. And again, that's really important for our uh, cell walls and our fruit. Having nice firm fruit allows for um, really good transport quality in our fruit. And so we can potentially get paid a premium on that. Now, the other important thing about um, having a really nice cell wall that's really firm is that it reduces the ability for um, pathogens to get into our plants. And so if you think of having, again, a reinforced wall, it's going to be difficult for some to break into that. But if you have something you know, really 
flimsy like paper, paper wall, someone's just going to be able to go through that uh, very easily. And so when we have reinforced cell walls, pathogens um, cannot get into our plant as easy. When we consider magnesium, so magnesium, there's two really main functions for this. And of course, all these nutrients have other functions that are important, don't get me wrong, but when we think of the main functions, magnesium, it's core to our chlorophyll molecule, and we all know chlorophyll is used in photosynthesis, and it's also used in the ribosome. The ribosome puts together our um, amino acids to form proteins. So we have basically one nutrient, which is very important for photosynthesis, producing basically the food for the plant. And we, it's also very important for the production of proteins. Now, proteins are basically the engines that run, the little machines in the plant that run everything. So it's very important that we have a machine that's functioning properly to build these other machines. And we can't have that machine functioning properly if we don't have magnesium. To explain why um, this is the case, I have chlorophyll here. So chlorophyll has magnesium in the center of the molecule. So you can see here magnesium. If we don't have magnesium, chlorophyll won't be able to function properly. So it's magnesium that captures the light in our chlorophyll. Um, and so without it, we're not gonna be able to capture that light. So it's super important that we have magnesium for both photosynthesis and protein synthesis. They're very important for increasing uh, plant productivity and um, the plant immunity to disease. Finally, we have sulfur. Sulfur is very important for the, fun uh, for the formation of different amino acids uh, and protein synthesis. So here we have methanoin. So this is a essential amino acid. So you can see here the sulfur. Uh, sulfur is used in the, the building of the amino acid. If there was no sulfur, we wouldn't be able to build the amino acid and then we wouldn't be able to build proteins. We would have dysfunctional proteins that wouldn't be able to do things. And that, that's really the main function of this nutrient. Of course, again, there's more, um, there's more functions that all these nutrients have, but if we can just focus on a few and we can target our management strategies, considering these few um, functions, then we'll be all the better for it. Well, I hope that helps. Um, again, make sure to uh, subscribe so you can see our future videos on some of the other nutrients. We'll be going into our trace and uh, micronutrients next, which are very interesting in the functions they play. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Tim Simmons. Cheers.